city that it is actually traveling uh, coming in today this evening. I would like to extend a very warm welcome to all of you from the Kotak Education Foundation. Um, and of course, uh, this is, as Nishan mentioned, a very special occasion for all of us. We have taken IIT Bombay under the Gathi Initiative has already been taking a lot of um, steps towards um, basically uh, women empowerment, but more importantly, the talent pipeline building and being able to encourage our women students. Um, in, under the Government of India scheme, we now have a super luminary quota. But it's a little surprising why we needed to have that in the first place. You know, we just had to um, encourage and provide a lot of incentives to uh, women students. Um, I would say that uh, about 26 percent of our current uh, student strength is uh, lady students, and um, there is, of course, they there are uh, challenges of uh, you know, various kinds. I would say it's uh, kind of a transformation that is happening. So um, there are challenges in terms of you know the uh, housing, uh, especially when the superintendent put a came in. Uh, the housing for women students, but also in terms of, uh, we keep asking this question that uh, while uh, we have seen a lot of uh, you know, Gen Zero, meaning 1958 when we started, and then we kind of uh, are looking at the leadership now, there are so many leaders like Nandan Milekani, uh, like uh, Bharat Desai, so many successful nation builders, global uh, leadership they have, they have been providing. Uh, but why isn't there a single woman there? And alone now for IIT Bombay, being there in that leadership position, we should have been proud of. Uh, tracing back just this thought of you know, reaching over to see how many of our alumni have uh, been able to specialize, achieve clear excellence and leadership positions. We did a survey of all our alumna and in 22, we honored about 31 of our alumna who have been extremely successful in leadership positions in academia and industry and NGOs. But nobody ever featured, for instance, of Nandan Nirikani, just to take an example. And so, uh, this is a question that we keep asking ourselves and we, put in, we have put in a lot of uh, initiatives in place looking at uh, how do we empower and promote our women students uh, both in terms of you know the scholarship the finances but also in terms of other support mechanisms one of the visions that we do have is to create you know if you look at some of our current educational initiatives like maker space which trains the first year students uh, into different, in a different way than the traditional way of engineering where they actually you know, make and see while the theoretical aspects are being enforced in the classroom they actually go and do some experiments and build devices and that's a formal part of the curriculum it is still overwhelmed by uh, the boys the male students uh, can we kind of create a completely separate ecosystem for the women so that they basically stay there and they have access to almost all the facilities associated with whatever they would want to do, be it in science, be it in technology, translation, entrepreneurship, social impact, whatever they would like to do, build leadership skills for them separately in a standalone hostel. That's also something that they are on the level. Just to create, you know, in terms of we would like to have, IT Bombay would like to have um, you know, very uh, large set of our alumna who actually go out and create impact out there, whatever way they choose. In that sense, I would say that uh, this initiative is very, very welcome because uh, we do have a diversity of students, meaning from financial backgrounds, and a lot of them may not send their uh, children, especially female uh, child, they may not send them to a distant place like IIT Bombay. 
just because they may not be able to meet their finances and then of course there's a lot of uncertainty associated with the kind of environment and the like. So this uh, initiative by the Kotak Education Foundation certainly helps. In fact, uh, when we had this orientation, orientation session, we had so many students come there and uh, this is going to certainly help the needy students to basically get access to quality education along with the finances, with the kind of support systems that we are creating, it uh, certainly would make for a diversity A, but also a lot of incentives, initiatives, and empowering of our women uh, and, uh, and students uh, so that they go out, once they graduate, they go out, they basically create the impact in whatever field or theme that they choose to work in. So I would like to sincerely thank and congratulate the Kotak Education Foundation for this very landmark initiative. I think this is the first that we are signing uh, and very thankful to uh, Kotak Foundation for the support and I look forward to being in touch on several other initiatives that we could do to empower. Um, certainly at the institute level this is a very strong focus and this initiative is aligned align with that kind of focus. So, thank you so much. Thank you. The mentorship program of Kota, I think it's really something that is very welcome and will be very useful towards that goal. Uh, so we saw that as again uh, sort of key uh, input to the whole thing. I mean, people do so there are others uh, who contribute as well. But that we are hoping will make a big difference to the whole program and uh, help some of these uh, women to sort of you know excel and and do well. Uh, in life. So thank you very much for conceptualizing that. Looking forward to a successful program. Well, good afternoon everyone. Professor Goody, Ravi Shankarji, uh, esteemed faculty members, the entire DRF team present here, bright students, and my colleagues from Kotec Education Foundation. I think I can only mirror the sentiments echoed by Professor Goody. You know, today marks a watershed moment for uh, our foundation uh, because it's the first step towards signing an MOU which will perhaps create a momentum of its own moving forward. You know, we are just looking at the numbers. Till date, we have about 265 girls who we are supporting only in the IITs. This year, our intake is going to be another 500. Okay, and typically speaking, about 50% of the girls who get in every year move into the IIT. I think we will be faced with the conundrum sooner than later. A is IIT should increase its capacity, B set up more institutions of uh, a qualitative nature, and C is um, you know also create capacities uh, in very many different ways for more girls to get into STEM education at large. What we are extremely thrilled about today is uh, a shared commitment to empowering these girls get into STEM education and become, you know, thinkers of a different kind, especially in the orbit and landscape of uh, STEM at large. I was there for the Invention Factory, Professor Goody. I was on this side of the table as well. And yeah, you're right. Most of the students exhibited, uh, you know, talent which was uh, raw talent which came in uh, right from, uh, let's say, an unpolished and un, uh, you know, uh, what should I say, for lack of a better word, they were still unchiseled, but they were businesses in the making. I mean, if someone spent adequate time on those, uh, you know, these very students would go about creating history. What we believe in at Kotec Education Foundation is the fact that there are enough and more meritorious girl children who are not able to pursue education because of financial needs. You know, we call them the underserved for very many reasons. Underserved because of lack of opportunities, underserved because of uh, not being in the right place at the right time, underserved because organizations, governments, are not thinking too deeply in terms of committing to their cause. 
So from that perspective, uh, you know, at Kotak Education Foundation, we decided that STEM is one area that we need to grow, and we need to stay invested for a long period of time. And uh, what we started off in the beginning uh, was with 50 students. This year, the intake is going to be about 500. And we rest assured this number is only going to grow year on year. Which means that as a foundation, we have uh, the wherewithal to take care of their fees over the next five or four years, as the case might be. It is to stand committed to their cherished dreams. It is it is to stand committed to their completing their education. And the genesis of this happened almost about 17 years ago. You know, Kota Education Foundation started small, you know, out of this war called the Embod in Mumbai. If many of you have been around Embod, it is essentially uh, Mankud at the epicenter, surrounded by Govandi, Shivaji Nagar, Trombe, and so on and so forth. Four factors actually uh, make this particular ward stand out. The first is the average lifespan of an individual in this ward, which is a measly 39 years. You know, and this was his, the study done by just. The second is your per capita income, which is about 10,000 per family per month. And the family sizes are typically huge, uh, depending on the kind of, uh, you know, area that you're looking at, anywhere between four and eight members in the family. The third is the infant mortality rate, as high as 66 births per thousand. You know, India's highest is at 72 in Jharkhand. And the fourth and the most compelling factor for us to be in education is that barely 1.5% of these people were making it to graduation. And this is in the heart of Mumbai, this is in the heart of the financial capital of India. Such ironies cannot exist, especially if India needs to be a developed economy. And you know, in our march towards a 5 trillion economy, these things do matter. So, we set about making small and subtle changes. And this galvanized momentum over a period of time. And today, our scholarship numbers are touching around 6,800 students. We've touched 6,800 students uh, and we've supported them across grade 11, grade 12, and their undergrad uh, journey at large. Many of them are now gainfully employed. And the moment they get employed, look at the multiple that we get in terms of them moving over the poverty line. I think that's where the crux of the entire issue lies. You know, even though there are enough of most stories about 500 million people in India moving over the poverty line, it's aspects like these which give us, uh, you know, uh, moments of truth and happiness at large. And we are extremely glad that we found an ally in IIT Bombay. We've been working with IIT Bombay ever since COVID broke out. Maybe many of you are perhaps not aware, but when COVID broke out, the first thing that we did was we approached Professor Sridhar from the EdTech department. And we said that most of our beneficiaries, whether it was school leaders, teachers or students, were out of the orbit when it came to uh, being digitally savvy or even having a digital asset. You know, parents had a mobile phone, but the parents didn't have jobs. And therefore, data banks were not being used. And even if they were being used, they were far and few in between. So we ran into a situation which was mind-boggling. There were 10,000 students from the schools that we partnered in. We partnered with about 75 schools in that particular year. And these 10,000 students had absolutely no window of opportunity to prepare for their board exams. So we approached, uh, you know, Professor Sridhar and his team, and we put together two elements uh, which started work at play. The first element was getting a digital asset in the hands of the students, you know, loaded with uh, content. And the second was in terms of training of teachers, so very important. And you had uh, something called the O-Teach program. So we, you know, contextualized the O-Teach program and we ran it. And some of those students are today part of our scholarship schemes. It means that the moment you intervene where it matters, there is going to be a deflection and that deflection is going to help us out. So from that perspective, IIT Bombay has been in our journey 
for almost five years now. Today is perhaps the second milestone that we are actually flagging off and we only sincerely hope that there are many more to come because we strongly believe that an educational institution like yours can provide immense value to NGOs like us and uh, help us curve and design and reshape our programs for a larger goal and a larger objective. We at Coding Education Foundation are extremely grateful to IIT Bombay, the entire faculty who have been holding our back every now and then when it mattered. Thanks so much and we hope that this is the fulcrum or lever of change. For a lot of people, some of them who are present here today, we would like to see you know, um, this number multiplied by at least 50 or 60 in time to come. Hello everyone, I am Gayatri Bhatt. I am second year undergraduate student uh, in electrical engineering department uh, and I am a Kotakane from uh, since one year and I am feeling proud to attend this event and uh, be a part of Kotakane uh, scholarship. Hello everyone, I am Pooja pursuing my B.Tech in third year in chemical engineering. I am extremely proud to be the face of Kotakane scholarship and and I am extremely privileged to be under the shadow of Kotak Education Foundation and continue my studies here.